Hello again, it's Fiona Hooper here and I'm back with another weekly installment of my live show, The Poetry of Painting. I'm just hoping that this week will be gremlin free after last week's power failure, which rather interrupted things. But anyway, could it have been the curse of the 13th episode, I wonder, or maybe it was just an electrical problem with the central heating, which thankfully is now fixed. I've also got news for you of another Bloom's online art exhibition, which is taking place on Friday the 18th and Saturday the 19th of June. There'll be 10 of us artists from around the globe. And as well as being able to see our artwork, you'll be able to talk with us in an informal, relaxed sort of atmosphere, not like a gallery, ask questions, maybe even buy something if you find that special piece of art that you love. Um, the tickets are free and they can be booked um, on the events page of my website, which is www.fionahooper.com. So now back to poetry and painting. And I'm very pleased to be able to welcome to this week's show, the lovely Scottish artist, Martin Goldie. So let me bring you in, Martin. Hello. Hi, Fiona. How are you, Hi, Fiona. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Very good. pleased to be on. Yeah, good to see you. So, um, Martin, I'm going to ask you, as you've not been on the show before, can you um, tell us a little bit about how you came to be a poet and about your poetry? I will do. I, I'm a very new poet, Fiona. I started just back in, in October, mm -hmm. successfully writing poems that I'm quite happy with. I, I've been writing prose uh, for some time in relation to uh, just journals of days in the hills. I do a lot of hill walking and I've done so since basically I've been a teenager. Uh, and I'd always tried to uh, turn some of it into poetry without any success. Uh, last October, uh, just by chance, uh, my brother uh, turned 60 and my sister had arranged that we would do uh, as we, because we couldn't visit, he's down in London, we would do a wee Zoom uh, sort of thing and she she was going to uh, compile a poem that we would split into three parts and each sibling would do their part. Uh, but uh, a couple of days before we were set to do it, she, she phoned to say, could you do your part of the poem? So had a couple of days and a I had a go at it and it came out accidentally quite good. And then shortly after that, I, I was on a hill uh, with a couple of very close friends uh, just behind the house and uh, managed to come up with this this new, this first poem about my days in the hills. And it, it must have been just triggered by this effort to get the poem done for my brother's birthday. And uh, so since then, it seems to have opened the floodgates and I've been able to get uh, quite a few poems done uh, between October and uh, today, uh, culminating in the poem for your lovely picture. Excellent. Thanks, <laughs> that's, that's a lovely story and, you know, how you came into it, it's, you know, sort of just suddenly awakened to poetry, as it were, really, in that you know, from what you're saying, which is amazing. It's lovely. So um, would you like to read the poem? This is the painting that we're going to talk about today. Um, we've each written a poem and we didn't know what the other one had written when we wrote them and you didn't know anything about the painting other than seeing it. So it's going to be really interesting to hear what you've got to say. So I'll put the painting on the screen for everybody to see. And um, if you'd like to go ahead and read your poem, Martin, that'd be brilliant. No bother, Fiona. Uh, a river runs through it is the, the name of the painting. And it's uh, from an arch of aged stone where eyes like ours for years have stared along that precious beat, gazed upon that avenue of dazzling birch and beyond to that distant sheltered lea where spring lambs play and fatten on sweet verdant grass. From that ancient span, see that blue cold river run through that quiet boulevard of coppered splendor. 
pleasure in the glint of sun on silver bark. Watch the endless tide of, rip of gentle ripples forever brush the shady tree line bank and melt. And by that snake of rippled water, above its bed of polished pebbles, surrounded by falls rural grandeur, a slender birch stands naked, barren, bare and lifeless. In death, its beauty plain and haunting, its thinnest twigs, like brittle, bony, arthritic fingers, stark against the blue-tinged sky. And hidden in that empty burke's strong shadow, deadly still, cold toes dipped in silver dancing sun-kissed ripples, a hungry heron crouched to hunt that next precious meal. In this pastoral, I hear the cheering chirp of giggling finches, hid amid the frail and lucent mandarin-hued leafage, hear the kind breeze whisper through the gently swaying foliage, and in that warm autumnal air, knows the fragrant scent of mossy birch. And when the autumn idle shifts to winter's certain chill, and in life's madding frenzy, my busy mind is distant, to this place by the river I will go, and in the, fade, the evening's fading sunlight, I will stand forever silent and watch plump trout jump for flies. Wow, that's brilliant, Martin. I, I can tell from that, you know, how much you love the mountains and the countryside and nature and everything. It just really comes through and how much you've observed it over all the years. I'm, I'm sure it's... It's so descriptive. I can, I can just hear how the painting made you feel, and um, what you saw yeah. in it. So, you know, and the and the references to the colours. Well, it was well. a lovely painting to sort of uh, try and come up with the words to do it justice. Thank you. I just, yeah, you know, you've you've got in there well, the colours. Yeah. yeah, and 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 the smells. You know, I love that that line. The um, the fragrant scent of mossy birch. That's that's just so descriptive, and it really takes me to that place. It's you know I can I can smell that. It's lovely, so brilliant. Thank you very much. It's um, a poem to treasure to go with my painting. So um, my poems are a bit shorter than yours, and it's a, a non-rhyming poem as well this week. Sometimes I do rhyme and sometimes not. So uh, anyway, here's my offering. So um, again, it's called A River Runs Through It. A riot of gold and orange, with flashes of green and silver, light glinting on the water, reflections wavering on the surface. The same rain that feeds the river has washed and cleansed the land, leaving colours rich and vibrant, intense in the cool, clean air. The river mirrors the cobalt sky, interrupted in the shingly shallows, Sunlight glinting on the ripples, diamond flashes adorn the water. Lush vegetation on the banks, birches and bushes in autumn robes, silver trunks punctuating the foliage, emerging from dark velvet shadow. The river flows on undeterred, carving its curving path as it goes, soon to be adorned with gold, as the birches lose their leaves. So um, some similarities in there, I think, as well with the colours and the the trees and the um, you know the the shingle and and stuff in the river as well. It's it um, it's it's quite fascinating that we've both picked up on the same sorts of things, um, but yeah. expressed differently as well. So. Uh, that's lovely. So, uh, do, do you write in rhyme as well, Martin, or are you more spoken word? And... Oh, we've lost your, we've lost your sound a little bit. So, do you want to say that again? We just oh, we've lost Martin. Oh dear, the gremlins have struck again this week. Hopefully, Martin will come back on in just a minute. But. Um, 
in the meantime, um, I just talk a little bit about poetry, but I had no idea until I started on these shows about the absolute multitude of different types of poetry that exist. And, um, and I'm actually enjoying reading poetry a lot more these days. Oh, here we go, Martin's back. Well done, Martin. Right, sorry, I seem to have lost you. Uh, uh, you're back now, that's good. Yes, hi. Uh, I, that was lovely. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's very similar to mine, and it's the the colour. It's like that change from autumn and moving into the sort of we autumn comes through your poem as well. I think. Yes. Yeah. But, and and things like the the shingly. Yes, you know, that's the right. And the pebbles and stuff. Yeah. So uh, really very similar in many respects, but you know, I love I love. The description that you've got in yours with the smells as well and everything i have to remember that picking up yeah. tips again. <laughs> uh, do you write in rhyme as well martin i don't know if you uh, I, I, I tend to write free occasionally accidentally <laughs> i do get rhyme and i quite like it but i don't i don't say out to uh, to write a, a sort of a rhyme poem uh, I sort of go more for the feel and rhythm of the, the words. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I, I would, I would make, I'm hoping to, to sort of move into the other areas and try and, and look at different types of poems and, and try to, uh, you know, maybe get some rhyming poems. But mm. I, I do like the free, uh, the, the sort of free verse. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was just saying when you dropped off, unfortunately, um, that I, before I started on this, I had absolutely no idea how many different types of poetry there actually are, you know, with specific right. names for all of them. Yeah, and, I know. And they're just incredible. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I'm going and enjoying reading the poetry in online groups and things and, uh, say, picking up tips from other poets like yourself about um you know how i can write about my paintings as well so yeah it's um and i think it's always so interesting to learn how other people write do, do you use a, a computer or something or do you just i, I use both computer and paper mm. i use the uh, i usually uh, i'll get an idea and uh, I'll, I'll i'll get it down on paper initially and uh, not everything, not every idea ends up in the finished poem, but I, I just put everything I can into it, and then I start editing, and uh, even even maybe lines that I, that I like, but just don't fit the mood or fit the, the rhythm, I, I'm quite sort of ruthless in taking out, uh, just so that, it, it, that I'm happy with the, the, the feel and sound of the poem. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I, quite like the, I quite like that process of editing and, and finding the, the word that you particularly uh, feel that, that, that sort of brings out the poem. Yeah. Uh, but, so yeah. that's what I tend to do. Uh, I'll reread just until I'm, I'm very happy with the sound of the poem. Mm. I, I must say, I, I tend to work in a similar sort of way. I'll have words that sort of think, oh, that, that's, that, you know, resonates with that painting and write them down yeah. and, and sort of put things in my phone so I don't forget them and then try and put it all together. And as you say, sometimes you've just had this phrase that you think that's brilliant for this painting, but yeah. there's just no way to work it into the poem. And, and that's that right. you've just got to put it to one side and, and let Aye. it flow. But I think Aye. it's a little bit like painting as well. Sometimes, you know, if I'm working on a painting and there's a little bit and I think I really like that bit, but it, it may just not gel with the rest of the painting. Yeah. It's, it's got to go, just paint over it, carry That's on, right. you know, and it's 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 making the thing work as a whole as opposed yes. to lots of little disparate bits that just don't gel together. And Yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, the, th the thing about a poem is that the, the, if you keep the phrases, they might come into a later poem, which is which is quite good. It's obviously yeah. uh, not possible in a painting, but I, I find that I find that I maybe come up with maybe a few lines for a poem, and I just know that as much as I like it, it's not suiting that 
poem, mm. and then it will come in and uh, enhance another poem later. So, I, I a good couple of lines will never go to waste. <laughs> Yes, and it, it, actually it's a bit like that with painting as well, because doing one painting sometimes you can think, well, that didn't work in here, but I can take that ah, yeah. and, and do something similar and, and work another painting with that in it, you know, so it's, it's, it's similar, but you can't just sort of like lift it from one to the other. It's oh, got no. to be eradicated from the one and then yeah. create it afresh on a new one. But there are a lot of similarities, I think, you know. And yeah. You know, I'm I'm trying to tell a story or depict emotions, and in my case, trying to make them um, tranquil and calming, so that yeah. you know people can try and lose themselves in the painting and relax and chill out after you know a hectic day at the office or whatever. And um, and I'm trying to do that with paint, and you're well, and words now as well. But I'm not an expert by a long way. But and you, you're doing it with your words to create the mental painting as it were yeah. with your poem which is you know and so I'm just I just still keep going back to that line um you know with the the, the mossy bit and the smells and that because yeah. it, just, it just forms a whole picture in my head you know because when, yeah. you're, when you're there you've got the scene but you've so you've got the sights you've got the colors but you've also got the weather the you know a yeah. breeze the warmth of the sun the smells insects biting whatever it's the whole experience that yeah you know it in me and paint and you in words we're trying to recreate that for other people to enjoy that's um, right and and i everyone's going to interpret it in a, a slightly different way and i think even with the description in your poem that could be creating one picture in my head but it might be creating a different image in somebody else's head as well. That's, that's right. That's right. Oh, uh, yeah. So, are you are you writing lots of poetry now about the the places that you generally walk, or does it is it from memories or? Well, it's uh, I've got a whole uh, I've got I've got writings from years back, and I I can pluck something and 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 try and write a poem based on the scene and it's sort of a mix of a uh, memory from the the being there and uh, the the words that i've got a uh, sort of written down mm. uh, and it, it, mood so i can i can i'll get an idea from maybe just the, the mood that i'm in and uh, and just generate the poem from that uh, but based on a uh, it's it's mostly based on scenes or uh, you know journeys that I've had uh, mm. in Scotland basically. <clears throat> and with the with the nicer weather hopefully coming along, will you be found sitting out on a hillside with your notebook or phone or well, whatever? I, well, I tend I tend to it tends to go into my head first, mm. and uh, I, I definitely try to maybe remember the. If I get a, a, a word or a line that I particularly want, I'll desperately try and get it written down as quickly as possible. But, I, but when I'm out in the hills, I usually just get a, a sense of, you know, a place or whatever, and uh, just build a poem from that. Yeah. So does it uh, sort of have to cement a bit or something until it's till it takes shape? Well, uh, sometimes uh, some I get quite quickly, and others uh, I just I, I'll get the idea and try and uh, write the poem, and uh, it 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 won't it won't appear. Uh, but I, but I've got it written down, and uh, I'll I'll go back to it, and it it occasionally will sort of reemerge in my head, or uh, and I'll get a, a poem successfully from from it but it's, it, sometimes they come very quickly mm. uh, and then it's just a case of honing it and just getting it into and I, I know I, I don't do rhyme but I'm very so I've got a, an idea of how I like the poem to sound in my head and then it, and I just hone and hone and just get it to yeah, a stage that I'm, I'm sort of happy with 
So it's, a, it's quite a nice, I quite like that, that sort of way of doing it. And and do you find that you you feel you've got more or less to a finishing point and then you leave it for a few days and then go back just to see if there's anything that needs a bit of tweaking or something? You know, does that... Well, yes, I, I always, I've always, I've always sort of thought about that, and it's like, uh, when does a poem fi completely finish, or mm. when does a song, and uh, completely finish? Because like, well, even so. even years later, or you can come up with a, a verse and say, "Oh, that would suit that song." But I, I suppose at some point, you've got to have it finished. Mm. But uh, yeah, what I'd, I'll, I'll have it, I'll have it down. Uh, and so a line will come into my head. It's maybe I just think will suit it, and uh, and it, it may be it's a memory of my dad or something like that. And I'll you know I'll I'll get it in. And uh, mm -hmm. the the question is when when do you actually consider the poem is finished? Yeah. And uh, w once I've got a, a situation that that all the ideas I've been looked at and uh, I'm happy with the flow and there's a sort of, they're usually quite narrative, I think, my poems, and uh, I'm happy with the start I've got and, the, and it ends quite well. I usually consider that's it. Mm. But, uh, one of the first poems I did, uh, it was quite a, it was a lengthy three-part poem and uh, eventually I just, I sort of split it into the first section is a poem on its own, and the second mm -hmm. two sections is poems. Is a, is a, a second poem, and uh, I just I've still not sort of decided whether to to merge them into the the three part poem or keep them as two separate. And it's, it's part of the fun, I suppose, is just uh, you know continuing to to look at them to see if they can be maybe improved. Mm -hmm. I think there's. That's a definite advantage with poetry because you can you can keep a copy of it as it was, yep. and then work on a new copy of it and so on. But with a painting, there's there's often a danger that you go on and you go a bit too far, and you think yeah, that, it yeah. was better before. But and it's, it's the one thing. Yeah. Unless, unless you're a digital artist, you can't undo that and yeah, go back to where right. you were. So. Definite advantage to poetry in that respect that you can keep a copy and yeah. you know, go back if you need to. Right. So, uh, yeah, and it's quite yeah. nice to look at look at the development of the, the poem from your initial uh, sort of thoughts and and sort of content and uh, in which you all think is quite good, mm. and then as you, as you as you as you edit it. And, and you trim it right down, and then when you go back to the initial version, you you, you think it's a, you sort of almost shudder because it's wordy and it it doesn't flow. Mm. But uh, it is quite it's, it's quite a, that's the process I do, and I quite enjoy it. Well, I just hope that with the paintings, I don't I don't go and think it was better before. You know, I don't mind going back and thinking, oh, in that at that stage, shudder. You know, as long as it improves and yeah. just think, no, stop. I've done everything I can, everything I want to. Stop, put it down, leave it. Yeah. Um, but ev even then, occasionally I do look at it a day or two later or, or whenever and think, hmm, something's just not 100%. And I may make a change, but um, I think you've got to be careful with doing that with a painting, yeah. especially because you can't go back and you – you can end up just fiddling with it and, and yeah. destroying some immediacy and um, energy that it's got from, you know, the initial working of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So do you find that with your experience as an artist that that helps that process of knowing when it's getting close to that you could that you're in danger of overdoing it, sort of thing? I think yeah. I mean, I'm always sort of thinking, have I done enough now? Is there anything? Yeah. And then I'll tend to sort of leave it, um, you know, even if it, I've just finished it, say, this afternoon, yeah. leave it, go out of the room, do something else for a little while, and then sort of, like, creep up on it again, come back in and just look around the door at it and think, hmm, you know, is it working? Is there anything that 
because sometimes when you're actually painting it, you're you, you're too involved with it, too close, and you don't always see something. Yeah. You come back later and you just think, oh, why didn't I do something about that bit? Or you know, so right. sometimes, sometimes no. Sometimes I've left it and thought, no, don't mess with it, leave yeah. it, and that's how it stays. And yep. occasionally I'll I will make um, a bit of a change, but. It, it is learning as well, as you say, to to say no, it's yeah. not enough, leave it. But I think even, you know, even the top artists probably have a, a moment when they think, oh, wish I'd left that well alone. Yeah, that's right, that's right. As time goes on, we're all learning and all developing and, you know, it, it gets easier to say that sort of no, leave yes. it, you've done enough, don't mess with it, you know, so... Um, yeah but it's a lot of similarities but yeah i say unless unless you're a digital artist you can't it's uh, well that's right i mean you can't if i've left if the paint has dried and then i work on top of it uh, while it's still wet i can remove it at that stage but once you've left that to dry as well then yeah it's you've either got to change it again or accept it for how it is so yeah just Aye. try not to overwork in the first place so yeah that's the, that's the, the key <laughs> absolutely but uh martin it's been absolutely great having you on the show and i've really enjoyed talking with you and hearing your poem and um just you know talking about your experiences and and sharing you know the way that we approach poetry and painting and how how much they're actually really quite similar so um, yep. i hope you've enjoyed it too as much as i absolutely have. it's been a pleasure and i'm yeah. hoping that you'll come back again very soon for another session on poetry painting and i believe you don't have to say anything now but i think you might already have a painting in mind as well yeah, so well, I've, yeah I've been having I'm a look and <laughs> but uh, no, it was an that. absolute pleasure to be on the show and uh, i'm glad you liked the poem I did, did very much. Did your very nice painting justice. <laughs> Thank you. It does. It's a beautiful poem, and I'm very proud to have it associated with my painting. So, oh, hopefully, it will be um, okay with you in the future if it can go into my proposed book, which I'm still excited about that idea. Having my paintings and my poems and other poets' up poems in there as well. So, um, hopefully, that will be fun. Absolutely, that would be fine. That would be great, actually. Got a way to go, but yep. You know, from great oats, uh, small acorns, great oats grow. Get it the That's right. right. That's <laughs> right. I know that would be absolutely brilliant. I'd be, I'd be delighted to be involved with that. Lovely, brilliant. So, um, thanks very much again, um, and just. Uh, Reminds me to say next week I've got another fabulous artist actually coming back to join me. We've seen him before um, to talk more about poetry and painting. So I hope everyone will be able to join us for that. Oh, and I'd missed some comments from Chris. I'm sorry about that, Chris. Thank you very much for your comments. That's really lovely of you. Um, so, yeah, if you can join me again next week, same time, same place. And if you do want to sign up to my VIP newsletter to see new paintings first before they get on social media and invitations to events, then just join up at www.fionahooper.com. Stay safe, have a good week, everybody, and hope to see you next week on Wednesday for another Poetry of Painting session. Bye for now. Bye. Bye, Martin. Bye now, Fiona. Bye.